So welcome to the Middle Years program uh, breakout room. We will be running through the various subject groups. Um, this afternoon, we'll be looking at individuals and societies, uh, mathematics, sports, arts, languages, science, and if we have time, there'll be a Q&A as well. If you have any questions at all, please do post them in the Padlet. Um, I'm just waiting to see if Chris is here to start with individuals and societies. If not, then we'll probably kick off with maths. Chris, over Perfect. to you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Again, sorry about the technical issues, but here we go. So individuals and societies um, is a IB term. Generally, it's humanity, social sciences, things like that. They obviously have an IB twist. Um, the continuum that you can see, it goes from PYP into MYP and into DP, social studies and PYP. MYP, as Mark explained, is a hybrid sort of course where multiple subjects, particularly geography and history, are integrated. That's a really creative, unique way of teaching this content. And then in DP, it branches off into specific subjects and generally in preparation for university and, you know, more specialized uh, approaches. And so at, um, again, integrated humanities is really, it's a hybrid and it's a unique way just to, just to make sure you understand it's not fundamentally different in terms of content and concepts, social sciences, history, geography, um, anything like that, that you've seen at other schools. It's, it's generally what it is here, except for it's all in one class. Um, where it's integrated, obviously, together as a hybrid type course. So it's a unique approach to familiar content. Um, now, to sort of give you some examples, um, the MYP uh, objectives in terms of the holistic development. Um, this is from the MYP guide, but you know I don't need to read it all off, but just keywords that you can see, there's not a lot of emphasis on content here. Um, human and environmental commonalities, diversity, interactions, interdependence of individual societies in the environment, um, a lot of things like that where there's relationships and, and you know, analyzing concepts in terms of, of connectivity and impact and consequence and things like that. Identif identify and develop concern for the well-being of human communities and the natural environment, act as responsible citizens of local and global communities, inquiry skills um, that lead towards conceptual understanding of the relationships between individual societies and the environment. So again, you can read through this and really see the essence of what we're trying to accomplish in this program. And, and it's not a strong, strong emphasis on, you don't see anything of memorization. There's no, like they didn't use that word, memorizing dates and memorizing names and things like that. It's not really an emphasis. We want students to explore concepts and draw connections and interdisciplinary connections and um, you know the essence of that. So again, how do we actually do that? Um, just some examples of units that we're, we're developing and using um, the concept driven units, as we said, with case studies as content. Um, you know, obviously things like World War Two and um, World War One were in Belgium, you know, like content is important, but the, the driving forces of the units are concepts. And so, like, for example, a common um, individuals and societies unit among many schools is identity and what makes you you and the concept of that is you know we ask students to reflect on who they are um, you know which three identities most define you um, you know are you a, are you a daughter are you a son are you a brother are you a sister are you a student are you Belgian are you American are you male are you female you know just anything like that um, you know, what makes you you and why um, the concept of identity um, is explored, human expression, um, the, the, you know, the framework, the content of that unit of human expression is ancient Greece, um, you know, and we look at lots of things like like speeches and debates and political expression and, you know, the just a lot of content centered around ancient Greece, but it's grounded in the concept of expression governments, challenges, and solutions. Um, lots of content today, you know, global warming and war and poverty, trying to find solutions to really complex problems. Um, that's the content we look at. We look at individual case studies. Um, you know, Bangladesh, the capital of Bangladesh, Dhaka, is really 
you know, the rising seas are really impacting that city in particular more than most places. And we get into significant detail and content, but again, it's used as case studies to emphasize concepts. You know, cities, past, present, and future, looking at cities like Constantinople, Istanbul, the changes over time, you know, thousand year old cities, things like that. Um, so those are just some examples of how we emphasize the um, program objectives, these abstract concepts that how do we actually do it? Um, we focus on concepts while using content as case studies. Um, and these are just some examples of units that we're working with. So then how do we actually evaluate um, progress and grades and things like that? Um, we have to sort of evaluate students, obviously. And in the IB, if you have familiarity with the IB, bear with me, I'm not gonna go into detail on this, um, but just as an introduction. And if you don't, it's important to know that the IB has a really unique way of evaluating students. And in the MYP, the essence is knowledge and understanding, investigating, communicating, and thinking critically. Um, and there's different strands within each one of these. Okay, so just as an example to, to articulate, there's an assignment in MYP5 where they have to imagine going back and changing the outcome of a major campaign in World War II using um, geography, geographic-based strategy. They have to really analyze the geography. They can't just say, well, we'll build a huge big air force or whatever. They actually have to analyze. And so criterion A, they have to know and understand and demonstrate um, the geography of the times, communicate criterion C in an effective way for the assignment. Criterion D, they have to really analyze the geography and come up with a strategy. Um, and so just to show you a quick example of some student work, um, you know, they identify the problem. They explain the geography, the geographic situation and then create a solution. And, and this was a really, really, you know, strong example of using analysis. They had different phases originally trying to keep, this is about Burma and World War II. The Japanese were able to successfully take Burma and they're trying to imagine preventing them from doing so creatively using geography. Um, you know, the naval blockade using alliances, using it going through um, phase two, if that doesn't work. And so it's all based on those, and then note the really good bibliography. I was really happy with that. But so it's all based on then how do you grade that? Criterion A, knowledge and understanding. Criterion C, communication. Criterion D is critical analysis. And so that is how those concepts are evaluated. Again, it's not based on you know content and memorizing content and understanding content as the fundamental essence. Um, and that's something that's it's really, really, you know, I'm just really, really supportive of that approach, obviously, in terms of using content as a case study to emphasize more complex concepts and make connections that way. Now, for MYP5 specifically, it's a bridge between the MYP and the DP. And what that means is we stay true to MYP guiding principles and philosophies. It's a really everything we just discussed and everything Mark explained in the beginning is um, it's a really unique approach to teaching and it's a really compelling approach to teaching in my view. And we maintain that in the MYP. At the same time, we want it to be as preparatory as possible for the DP the next year. It's a really, really rigorous, um, you know, there's external content requirements that students have to know and learn. And so we want that transition to be smoother um, for them, so it's not just MIP and then DP, they have a sort of a transition while maintaining the essence of MYP, but then preparing them. So MYP5 uh, Integrated Humanities prepares for theory of knowledge, which all DP students take, extended essay, which all DP students take, and then economics, history, ESS, psychology, which we offer, and then geography and global politics, it prepares for that. I put an asterisk, it's always a discussion if we expand in DP. That's not something that you know we can speak about now, but there's always a conversation about adding courses as well. So the point is, is that, for example, we really want students to be prepared for DP, not by using um, just teaching pre-DP stuff, but just by integrating key components and terminology and concepts so that when they get to DP, they certainly definitely have the skills 
to excel in that rigorous, rigorous program. And they've seen some things before. They've just been introduced to certain concepts and they've been in introduced to certain things so that, you know, when they get into history or politics or economics or whatever course, um, they've just seen some key concepts before. So MIP5, War and Peace, um, emphasizes skills and concepts seen in DP history and global politics, skills like research, academic formal research, proper academic citation practices, analytical evidence-based writing. Um, that's something you know you really just have to be able to do at a high level in the diploma program. And so we really try to emphasize it, evidence-based writing. Concepts like causation, impact, consequence. Um, and an example of that, again, is a summative assessment. You can see, you know, it's just teaching them annotated bibliographies and proper citations and then analyzing sources and really talking about the values and limitations. And um, they didn't have the most fun with this one, you know, annotated bibliographies as a summative assessment, but it just really, really prepares for all the components of DP. Um, you can just see the level of work that we're really aspiring to. Um, just to be able to do that and enter and that way they're just very, very prepared from a skill position um, and a concept position to then address the DP content. Um, you know, another example of that is unit finite resources as a concept um, that emphasizes environmental systems and societies and then economics, skills like data collection, data analysis, using and analyzing case studies, concepts like sustainability, resource use in society and demand management, um, fiscal policy. So again, it's, it's concept based NYP con units that sort of introduce and integrate preview elements of DP courses that students may take again. So when they get to DP, they've just seen some of these main concepts before. So that's the introduction to individuals and societies in detail in um, the MYP program. And if anybody has any questions, you can go on the Padlet. You can ask Mark, you can ask me, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And I appreciate your time. Apologies again for the delay in getting here. Um, and welcome. And so, Mark, that's it for me. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions at any point, please do post them on the Padlet. I see that there have been some questions already about Spanish and math, which have been answered, I think. But Gabby, I'm sure, will tell us a little bit more about math, particularly, say, placement tests and how we group. So over to you, Gabby. Thank you, Chris. Uh, sorry. Okay, so here we go again. My name is Gabriela Oleri. I'm subject leader for mathematics. Um, sorry, just moving this somewhere. Uh, the MYP guide states that a mathematics program should be tailored to the needs of students seeking to intrigue and motivate them to want to learn its principles. Students should see authentic examples of how mathematics is used and relevant to their lives and be encouraged to apply it to the new situations. Um, in MYP, students are required to study a balance of concepts, number, algebra, geometry, and trigonometry, and statistics and probability. There are four criteria that we assess in MYP uh, for mathematics. A is knowing and understanding, B is investigating patterns, C is communication, and D is applying mathematics in real life context. Criterion, D, uh, criterion A, which is knowledge and understanding, um, this is fundamental to studying mathematics and forms the base from which to, we explore concept and develop skills. The objective assesses the extent to which students can select and apply the mathematics they've learned to solve problems in both familiar and unfamiliar situations in a variety of contexts. Normally, assessment tasks for criterion A are likely to be classroom tests and examinations. Criterion B, investigating patterns, allows students to experience the excitement and satisfaction of mathematical discovery. Working through investigation encourages students to become risk takers, inquirers, and critical thinking thinkers. The ability to, require is, to inquire is invaluable in the MIP and contributes to lifelong learning. The tasks for criterion B can be done under test conditions or as 
an individual project. Criterion C, communication. Mathematics provides a powerful and universal language. Students are expected to use appropriate mathematical language and different forms of representation when communicating mathematical ideas, reasoning and findings, both orally and in writing. The Criterion C tasks are usually written presentations and reports. These allow students to explain what they have studied, researched or discovered. Criterion D, applying mathematics in real life contexts. MYP Mathematics encourages students to see the subject as a tool for solving problems in an authentic real life context. Here, students are expected to transfer theoretical mathematical knowledge into real life world situations and apply appropriate program solving strategies, draw valid conclusions and reflect upon their results. Assessment tasks for Criterion D are likely to be mathematical investigations, reports, or math essays, as I call them, or classroom tests with real life questions. For MYP 1 to 3, students are divided according to their levels and sets so that they can get the support and practice needed to reach their full potential. They are divided in sets usually with, um, with a test at the beginning of the year so that we can, uh, we can see their level, but students can move between, uh, between sets if we feel it's necessary. For MYP 4 and 5, students are divided into two groups, standard and extended. The standard curriculum provides students with the foundation needed for DP standard level exams, and the students that cover the extended curriculum will more likely do the higher level mathematics DP exams. While there is no external IB mathematics exams for MYP or for uh, any other subjects, at BIS, we make sure that students understand the importance of exams and are used to working under exam conditions. For this reason, the MYP one to four students have mathematics internal exams at the end of each school year. And the MYP five students ha will have an internal entry exam for the course and level they want to study at DP. Here you can see the progress of maths from uh, PYP to the diploma program. So in PYP, they have the same curriculum. They also have the same curriculum in MYP one to three. Um, afterwards in MYP four and five, it divides into standard and extended. As I said, the, the MYP standard is a better, uh, the best preparation for the two mathematics courses at their standard level and the extended group um, are prepared for the higher level uh, exams. That being said, a, a student that, that, does, um, that follows the MYP four and five extended could also do the, the standard level exams and the other way around if, uh, if they're willing to put a lot more uh, work in to, to be at the level of the extended students. Um, We've also had this year at BIS, um, we celebrated Mathematics World Day. MYP one to three students played online games with students all over the world. And we're all looking forward to this year's celebration. The IB philosophy is that studying mathematics should be more than simply learning formulas and rules. Students should not have the impression that all of the answers to mathematics can be found in a book, but rather that they can be active participants in the search for concepts and relationships. In that light, mathematics becomes a subject that is alive with the thrill of exploration and the rewards of discovery. For any questions, as we said before, you can use the Padlet or you can uh, use this email address to email me for any other questions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Blake Burrows and I'm the lead PE teacher, health and physical education teacher at Bogarts International School. Um, at Bogarts, what we try and do is we would like to uh, develop the whole child as a person and we believe in the holistic nature of the, uh, education 
that we're developing, or we're delivering rather, at Bogarts International School. So as you can see here, we're doing tennis today, but we, what, we in, what we aim to do is that we aim to make sure that we deliver sport, a sporting program, but also deliver a, a program which uh, encompasses lifelong learning. So we also work with uh, social media and its influence on their everyday lives. We talk about health promotion, nutrition, all of that sort of uh, lifelong learning skills that we would like for our children, or our students rather, to make sure that they have when they leave Bogarts as well. So feel free to get in contact with us. Uh, always happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, and have a fantastic day. So the NYP Arts is made up of three different subjects. Performing Arts, which is music and theatre, visual arts and digital design. We have three teachers for these subjects. Me, Catherine, I teach performing arts. Chiara teaches visual arts and Elena teaches digital design. The structure that we have for the arts program here is that MYP one to four take all three subjects once a week. And then in MYP five, they can choose between performing or visual arts. We do lots of combined arts projects, including exhibition days, we have concerts, we have theatre performances, and this year for the first time we're having a musical, which I'm personally really excited about. Um, and so they're things that the whole MYP participate in as part of our arts program. You can see there's some pictures from different events that we had at the school last year. Also considering the restrictions we have with COVID, I'm personally really proud of what we've been able to do in the arts over the last two years. We're still able to have concerts, um, performances, but unfortunately parents have not been allowed. So we've done our best to live stream or pre-record performances so that parents can also see what the students have been doing. I'll start by specifically talking about music. So MYP one to three, they uh, do lots of different units. Some examples are the elements of music. So this is music basics, jazz music, which is my personal favorite unit to teach and Western art music. Um, the students learn guitar, piano, we do singing and they play together as well. And of course we do music theory and music history in the context of the units. Moving to MYP four and five, now in the music part of um, the subject, we, for example, do film music, and then also we do songwriting. And so this year, the NYP Fives wrote songs for the musical. They literally wrote all of the songs. Um, and they continue uh, with guitar, piano, and singing. There's also more of a focus on music composition. So actually composing and also music production. So recording music and the program we use is called Soundtrap. But if the students have a Mac, we also teach GarageBand as well. Um, here are some photos of various musical activities happening at the school. Moving on to theatre, so MYP one to three. Um, they have subjects, they have units that include introduction to theatre, staging fairy tales, and Romeo and Juliet. And the students always have the option of being part of the cast, that is the actors on the stage, or part of the crew. And the crew is things like costume design, hair and makeup, stage design, lighting, audio, music, props, things like that. So we never force students to perform on the stage if they're not comfortable. There are always plenty of positions in the crew that they can join. But we also do like to um, ask students to be risk takers and to uh, perform on the stage if they are comfortable doing so. And then moving on to MYP four and five, uh, we continue studying certain plays. Um, and also uh, we study playwriting and script writing. And of course, as I mentioned before, this year, the big project for MYP5 is writing and putting on the musical. 
Okay, I'm going to, oh, sorry, there are some pictures of various theatre activities happening at the school. Um, and one other thing, in NYP2, we have a specific unit on public speaking. This is a very important skill for the students to learn. And so we teach them techniques like eye contact, projecting their voices, um, so that they have strong public speaking skills that they can uh, transfer to other subjects and also into the real world um, once they finish school. Okay, I'm gonna pass over to Chiara who will speak about visual arts. Thanks, Chiara. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So uh, I'm Chiara, the visual art teacher for MYP NDP. Uh, from MYP 1 to MYP 3, the main focus of the program is developing creativity, discovering their own style, being responsible and independent in the creation of art pieces, which is very important, uh, learning the basic techniques of drawing, learning about the formal elements of art, experimenting different mediums, so they work in 3D or in 2D, discovering different art movements and analyzing different art pieces. Voila. For example, for, so in MYP 4 and 5, the main focus is on anatomical drawing, three-day sculpture, one-point and two-point perspective, and more complex techniques in preparation for DP art. Thank you. So voila, here we have some pieces uh, from uh, last year's exhibition and also some works from this year, especially the clay sculptures. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Chiara. Um, and I'll finally talk about digital design. So what is digital design? It uses the design cycle as a way to structure inquiry and analyze problems, develop feasible solutions and test and evaluate the student solutions for the design problem. So what does that look like in practice? Well, MYP one to three, they focus on developing character sketching um, learning sequencing using stop motion, and they also um, do a lot of digital storytelling. And we have some examples here of students working on their various um, digital design projects. Okay, uh, final thing is the extracurricular program. So we have lots of options for students at the school. Um, as James shared, shared earlier in the STEAM for Kids, um, we have various workshops that the students can be involved in, photography, video editing, Photoshop and dance. Outside of that, we can, you can do private music lessons. At the moment, uh, we offer piano, guitar, violin and singing. This is at the school before or after school. And then we also have film clubs. So if um, the students are interested in being involved in making a film, at the moment, the students are making a film for the Brussels Short Film Festival. Um, so anything from acting, directing, costume design, um, music composition, because they're composing the score for the film as well, script writing, et cetera. Um, that happens on a Thursday lunchtime. And that's run by one of our student leaders in MYP4. So there are lots of extra um, curricular activities that the students can be involved in in the arts here. That's it from me. If you have questions, please ask them on the tablet, um, the Padlet, sorry, and I'll be happy to answer them. And also, if you have any questions about PYP, because uh, we also have arts in the PYP, please feel free to ask them um, on the tablet as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chiara. Um, Catherine, yes, so moving on to languages. Uh, obviously, we have a lovely range of linguists from Emma to Valentin and Ava, who will uh, introduce the languages we offer in the Middle East program, namely English, French, and Spanish. Over to you. Okay, I will begin. I will share my screen. It's the right one. Okay, hello. So I am Valentin, French subject leader. And before um, I begin, I would like to introduce my two colleagues. Eva, who is um, head of Spanish department, and Emma, who is uh, head of English department. And um, before I explain the different languages in MYP, Emma would like to say a word about um, the English level required in MYP, because as you know, all our courses are in English. So Emma, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Could you put the slide on for me, Valentine? Um, but yeah, sorry. 
Thank you. Um, as Valentine as Valentine said, um, because we do do all our lessons in English, there is a there's a there's a focus predominantly on English language. Before students come to MYP, we would expect students that are coming through our system, through the PYP system, we would expect these skills um, to already be in place. If this is not the case, this is what we aim to achieve by the end of MYP1. So in terms of reading skills, students should be able to read with a variety, read a wide variety of fiction and non-fiction texts and demonstrate their understanding of the main ideas and feelings. Uh, make predictions, identify main themes or morals, decide on conclusions based on previous reading, work in small reading groups, carry out individual and collaborative, re collaborative research, um, have knowledge of literary terms, use punctuation and grammar, and be able to identify parts of speech. And yeah, writing skills, students should be able to organize writing using sentences. Um, a varied vocabulary is important as by the time students are coming to NYP, they should be level B1, B2, um, students who have a B2, B1, uh, sorry, B1 upper level of English, they will automatically be in a language and literature class. Students with a B1 level for, they would automatically go into an acquisition class and they would be supported obviously to, 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 get, to, the, to get to the required level. And by the time they finish uh, MYP, they should also be around about a B2 level of English. Students should also be able to use punctuation, punctuate most of their sentences correctly, use paragraphs and begin to indicate where speech, um, speech where appropriate, uh, spell with increasing confidence and accuracy. Obviously, these are skills that are work in progress and things that we will continue to develop. Uh, use fluent, legible, linked style of handwriting and pay attention to the layout and presentation of their work. Finally, uh, with regards to list, uh, speaking and listening skills, the students be, should be able to listen for information, make choices based on what they've heard. Uh, the emphasis is on listening attentively to others, responding appropriately, appropriately, making thoughtful and relevant contributions to discussions, research information, present prepared or uh, present prepared oral talks to the class write stories for and read them to peers or younger school members, which is something we try to encourage um, uh, with our transitional phases, both with M PYP to MYP and MYP to DP. Uh, also, uh, students should be able to carry out collaborative research projects, participate in discussion and, negotiate, and negotiation in collaborative projects. So these are the skills that we would expect that students are leaving MYP1 with or that they would be coming into MYP with. We obviously uh, strive to develop these skills further. I'll pass you back to Valentine. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. So, um... As Marek said before, we have three languages at school, English, French, and Spanish. For English and French, students have two options, language and literature and language acquisition. For Spanish, for the moment, it's only language acquisition. Language and literature is for native and or fluent speakers, and it's literature skills focused, and language acquisition is for non-native, or non bilingual speakers. It's language skills focused and really important. Students are divided into phases according to their level. So it means that we have different groups. So I'll give you an example. A French student can attend an actual French literature class and continue to improve his English language skills. Or a bilingual student can attend both French and English literature. So this is about language class specificities. In English for language and literature, we have one class for your group, and we also have a high level for native speakers. For language acquisition, students are divided into three groups, phase one, phases two, three, and phases four, five. For French, groups depend on students level and number for language and literature. So for example, this year, MYP 1 and 2 are in the same group, 
but we have another group for MYP3, another one for MYP4, and then for MYP5. And language for language and acquisition, we also have three groups. So we don't offer language and literature in Spanish. Um, so native speakers are placed in the high level of language acquisition, but obviously teachers um, use differentiation in the classroom to help them continue to improve and so on. And we also have three groups for language and acquisition. Students are divided into groups based on placement tests that we do at the beginning of the year, but also students and parents will end progresses. So it's really important to know that we are very flexible. For example, a student can change group um, during the school year. So that's it for me. So here you have teachers contact, but if you have questions, I also invite you to write on the Padlet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after the languages, we move on to the sciences, I think. Unless Eva had something to add for Spanish. Uh, sorry, Mark, everything uh, that Valentin said, um, Spanish was included on that presentation. Yes, I thought so. so Thank I, you. I will not add anything. Not Thank at all. You. Thank you ever so much. Please do continue to add your questions to Padlet and I'll pass over to Sophia, our head of science. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon to all. And thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, I'll start sharing my screen. Right. Um, so this is, I think, the last presentation in the MYP channel. And this relates to MYP science. Um, our lovely team consists of Amin, who teaches physics, uh, Jacques, who is teaching chemistry. I am teaching um, uh, biology. Uh, and uh, of course, MYP science in MYP1, it's integrated sciences. And Renard, who's teaching MYP sciences um, in MYP2 and 3, and uh, environmental system societies in DP. Um, I'm just showing you here the pathway to the science subjects. Biology, chemistry, and physics are the three purely scientific subjects which lead from uh, the integrated sciences in MYP. And environmental system, systems and societies uh, is a combination of uh, science and individuals uh, and societies in MYP. Um, so, uh, as I said before, in the middle years, we teach, no, actually, this is what I'm going to say uh, right now. Um, sciences are taught as integrated sciences in MYP 1, 2, and 3, and as three separate subjects, biology, chemistry, and physics in MYP 4 and 5. Um, the science, as we have developed it, is aligned with the mission of our school, of Bogart's International School. We aim to um, assist our students and support them in becoming lifelong inquirers, scientifically literate learners, caring, uh, responsible individuals, critical thinkers, problem solvers, decision makers, and of course, leaders of positive action. Um, as you have heard many times, possibly today, we want our students to uh, develop agency and responsibility. We want them to lead their own learning. Uh, so how do we teach? We teach by guided explorations and research, uh, lectures, interactive lectures, inquiry guided learning, case studies, models, practical activities. Um, I have inserted some uh, pictures from activities our students have done this year. Uh, this specific picture is from MYP1. It's a practical activity they carried out in the lab earlier in the year. Uh, students are learning through classwork tasks, uh, individual and in groups, explorations, inquiries, hands-on activities, and also through homework tasks, which we uh, perceive to be integral in the learning procedure, in the learning uh, journey. Uh, homework tasks target with, to reinforce, aim to reinforce understanding, to explore newly introduced concepts, practice on taught material, and of course, our, uh, as you will see in the following slides, it's always communicated on Manage Back. 
Um, Managebook is our primary platform of communication. Um, as in all subjects, we aim to present uh, units so you can actually track your uh, children's learning uh, for submission of classwork and homework tasks, to submit assessments, uh, to share feedback, of course, and report on progress. Um, in science, across both in MYP, uh, in lower MYP and upper MYP, we follow um, uh, the four criteria which are designated by the IB system. And um, this uh, aim to assess students across the knowledge, understanding, and development of skills. Um, in lower MYP, we um, uh, pass on from the transdisciplinary approach in PYP into a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach. And we um, targeting basic concepts, which are overarching, uh, change relationship systems and logic mostly. Um, in lower MYP, we teach as integrated sciences with activities which are student-centered. We scaffold and differentiate as required, as needed. We follow the aims and objectives that the IB is prescribing for us. Um, and we want our students to develop the necessary skills in order to be successful in their learning. Um, I have listed the units of inquiry across the years. Um, so in MYP1, we start with generic science units uh, and we make sure that we have uh, represented all three sciences as we pass along, as we go from MYP1 to MYP2 and 3. So our students get a taste of the three uh, purely scientific subjects, biology, biology, chemistry, and physics. So for example, in MYP1, uh, classification of living things targets biology, states of matter targets is the, the primary unit for uh, chemistry, and forces is a unit which is purely physics. Uh, in MYP 2 and 3, again, we have um, a multitude and variety of units uh, which target all three sciences. And um, in MYP 4, we teach the three sciences separately, biology, physics, and chemistry, as we also do in MYP 5. So these are the units in biology, chemistry, and physics in MYP 4. And these are in MYP 5. We have taken a considerable care in aligning our curriculum vertically with backward planning from the TP units. So we pride ourselves with, um, to train our students uh, and uh, assist them and support them in becoming uh, ready for DP. Um, examples of tasks that we are giving um, in upper MYP, um, they, they also target real life applications. So for example, uh, we have done and we will do uh, during the course of this year, effect on exercise on human pulse. Uh, this is lab work in biology, evaluating a method of food preservation via osmosis, um, again in biology, uh, momentum conservation in physics, testing pH sensitivity of contact lenses. So we want to uh, design our tasks, our assessments, based around, uh, revolving around real life problems. Um, and this is it for me for science. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please upload them on the pla Padlet and we would be happy to uh, respond as we see them. Thank you very much.